here today with Macy McLean, who stars as Rachel Joy Scott in the new movie that comes out Friday, I'm Not Ashamed. So thanks, Macy, for joining us. Ah, thank you for having me. Yeah. So now this is, this is a, a true life movie about an event that is one of those events that was kind of so powerful that people kind of, many remember where they were, and, and I know I certainly do, um, getting ready to go to Littleton to, you know, a couple days after. But um, so people kind of know a, a bit about it, but for you, know, for you, you, know, you were really young when this, when this happened. What, what do you remember kind of early on about, you know, not that day, because you don't remember that, but what um, do you remember about hearing about Columbine and about Rachel and, um, before this film even came about. Yeah, I, I was really young when it happened, so I don't remember, you know, ever, I don't remember where I was when it mm. happened or anything like that, but I do remember just throughout school learning about it because it was, you know, an event that happened in America, and honestly, nothing like this um, had ever happened before. So, um, you know, even, even when we do the whole um, – you know, safety regulations in school, I know a lot of that is because of what happened at Columbine, and we were taught that, and so, uh, but most of my research, and what I learned from Rachel, uh, was when I got the audition, that was when I really sat on my computer, and just, you know, googled everything possible I could find, um, and I had no idea, really, about her until then. Yeah. So, so specifically, I want to unpack Rachel's story a bit, but specifically, what, what, was the, what was the journey for you about kind of first hearing about this movie to all of a sudden landing the role as yeah. Rachel? It was a long process. It wasn't anything that was overnight or, um, you know, just one audition. It actually took about a year. Wow. Um, so, you know, a lot of callbacks and, and that was a process, you know, for the producers and the director of, of trying to find, uh, you know, who they wanted and, um, just all the details with that. Uh, but for me, it was, it was, it was kind of odd. I knew as soon as I got the audition, I had a gut feeling that I was going to do it. Hmm. Um, and I kind of, you know, I, I, I was like, I'm probably, I'm the last person they were scouting the whole nation. And hmm. I was like, why in the world would I think I was going to do this? But hmm. I really feel like that was from God of just preparing me. Um, but I also learned a lot of times when God calls you to do something, a lot of time passes sometimes and yeah. he prepares for it. Um, so that's kind of what he did that year. I'm not going to lie. I had to uh, totally trust him that if I was going to do it, it was, he was the one that was going to get it for me. Oh. <laughs> and it wasn't anything, you know, um, that I did, but, uh, so it was, it was a, it was a roller coaster of a ride for me that, that audition process, but. It, it, it was needed that year. I felt like God actually prepared me that year for the role more than anything. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's cool. Uh, so, and how long was the actual filming? Like once you, once you landed it and you knew that, okay, I'm going to play this role. How long was that until you were done filming? Um, it was actually pretty quick. I knew I was going to play the role um, that summer is when I'm pretty sure I found out. And then we started filming in July. So I, it was kind of last minute, I guess, when I found before filming that I found out I was going to do it. Um, and then filming lasted for about seven weeks in Nashville. And um, I got to go up a week early and meet the director and um, kind of figure out how we were going to work together. And that ended up being one of the most incredible processes um, <laughs> You know, when you learn you can work so well with somebody and you kind of, you kind of just know how to together and uh, how to, I don't know, you could, it, it was just really cool. I've always heard it's so, it's so special when you can find, um, you know, an actor and a director that really click and really are on the same page and uh, um, to tell a story. And we kind of found that. And so um, meeting him was incredible. And then um, I got to talk to her mom. Her mom called me. Um, before filming started and this meant the world and she just really just told me how proud she was and hmm. uh, proud she was of me and how confident she was that God had called me to do it and that meant so much going into filming oh, wow. because you know it's a lot of pressure when you're playing someone's daughter of, I, you know you want them to like it more than anything right <laughs> so, yeah, that that helped a ton no point so you know for I mean the the, the quick overview for those for the 
a few people who may be watching this and not know the name Rachel Joy Scott or Columbine, you know, Columbine was a horrible tragedy in April of 99 that, that 13 people lost their lives and many more were injured. And Rachel Joy Scott was, was outside and was one of the people um, that was killed in that. And so this is, this is a movie about her kind of life. And now, um, so with that overview, how has your view of that event and Rachel specifically changed maybe as a result of researching and acting in this movie? Yeah, I think a misconception that I had, and I think a lot of people have, is that Rachel, you know, was this perfect girl. She was, you know, cookie cutter, perfect life. And she was, you know, kind of did everything right. And I mean, she's considered a martyr for Christ. So, you know, that's just how I always thought of her. Um, and even in my mind, I thought, like, who can relate to that, you know? Um, but the more I did research, and especially the more I got to dig through her journals, um, I had eight journals that I got to dig through every single night. Wow. Um, yeah, and it, it just showed how real she was and that she wasn't perfect at all. And you'll see that in the movie. She struggled, and just like we do, she was just trying to figure it all out and trying to figure out what it looked like um, mm. for her to follow follow Jesus. And that's kind of what you see her wrestle with. And it was not an overnight thing at all. Right. So that's kind of something new I found out when researching her. I was like, man, I can relate, you know, like she's so real. <laughs> so yeah, and I, th and I think that w one thing that I noticed and then it so maybe because I had noticed it as I was watching it with my wife and two of our kids. Um, and then I, I read in a in an another interview that you had done that you that you said, this isn't a movie that's about the Columbine massacre or yeah. about her death, that it's yeah. more about her life. And, uh, and certainly found that to be true. Um, that, that surprised me in a good way about, about how this movie actually turned out, that it was a, it, it was a richer backstory, if you will. Yeah. You weren't just waiting for that scene or waiting. It's not this huge buildup that that's what the movie's about. It's, you get so attached to her and, and her life, honestly, and that's what you leave so inspired by. Right, right. I, 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 it, it always bothers me when, when Christian movies don't show the real messiness or the messy <laughs> The messy part is the first five minutes and the faithful part is the next hundred, you know, hour and 35 or whatever it is. So, yeah. so it was, it was neat to see the angst, I guess, of yeah. what it is to live out this messy Christianity um, for all, for many of the characters. And it wasn't just every other Christian in the movie was perfect either. Every there's, you know, yeah. there were a, a lot of messy people involved in her story, which, yeah. which is why it's relatable. So, so you, you mentioned getting a phone call from, from Rachel's mom. How much time did you get to spend or have you gotten to spend with, with Rachel's family? I know yeah. she's got some siblings too. Um, mm -hmm. Her mom, oh my goodness, she is really, uh, really just the most incredible person I've ever got to be around. And so every time we're around each other, it's honestly just so special. Hmm. Um, you know, throughout filming, she would sit down with me whenever I needed to, if, you know, um, if we would talk for a while and she would tell me really anything I needed to know or wanted to know. And uh, she would come on set sometimes and it was so crazy and so encouraging. I remember one time she said she felt like it was like having Rachel back, <laughs> you know, and that's just crazy. Yeah. Um, and so it's just really special anytime we get to spend time together. And just to hear her say that is I don't know. It's like, what, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of even hard to comprehend, but, right. and then her brother would come on set sometimes. And, um, that was really cool getting to meet him. And, you know, after Rachel's death, he kind of became the face of, you know, what happened at Columbine, you know, he was kind of the messenger that told what happened and um, even to tell his sister's story. So mm. meeting him was really surreal. And then, um, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> Um, and then I got to meet her sisters at the premiere and that was, oh my gosh, that was crazy. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so were, were, were 
was her mom and her brother at the premiere? I mean, did you did you actually get to watch the movie with family members? Yeah, that was um, that was hard. Yeah. It was really hard. Um, her family kind of sat a few rows in front of me. Um, her brother wasn't there. He I, something happened, but he couldn't make it on time. But her sisters were there, and her Rachel's stepdad was there, Larry, and then uh, her mom and some of her cousins and stuff. And it was, it was hard watching it, and, you know, with them. It was, it was, I think everyone knew the weight of what we were telling the story um, and, and how real it was to them. So I think it needed to be that way, but it was, it was a mixture of a really special night and a really fun night, but also we all knew the weight of it and especially for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, as, as my, as my wife and my kids and I were talking and I was letting them know that I was going to get the chance to interview you. Yeah. And, uh, my, my, my wife said, make sure that you ask her this question, <laughs> you know, how, how did the making of this movie, the getting to know Rachel's life and reading her journals, how has that impacted your own life and faith? Yeah, I honestly, it did in a tremendous way, that whole process. And I feel like there's so many ways I could answer it. There's really so many different answers I could give you. Um, kind of what God did in my heart through her, through her life and getting to step in her shoes. Um, but one of the things that I love about her and, and I never want to forget and that I really want to live by is, you know, even when she was a little girl, she wanted, she knew she was going to make an impact on the world. And you see that in the movie, you know, she traces her hand on the back of a dresser and in it, she writes, these hands belong to Rachel Joy Scott, and they will someday touch millions of people's hearts. Mm. And so it's like she knew she was going to make an impact, but she had no idea how. Like she had no idea that it would be through her death that truly millions of people would hear about her life and the impact she made. But my favorite thing about her is that she was just faithful. You know, like when she was at Columbine High School, when you know, she had no idea the impact she was truly making. She never even got to see the fruit of what she was doing um, and how she was loving people. But she was just faithful to do it where God had put her. And I think that speaks to us so much of you have no idea what God's going to do through you, but we're just called to be faithful, you know, faithful to, to love him first and then um, and to really reach out and be the hands and feet of Jesus to people and not just pass through life and walk. You know, I feel like we can miss so much if we just, if we just keep walking through life and don't truly see people and, and see um, what God wants to do through us, you know, in their lives. And um, Rachel did that. And no, she never did it perfect, but mm -hmm. she truly saw people and, and made an impact just where God had put her. She didn't wait for an audience or a platform or anything mm -hmm. like that. It was just in the everyday things. Yeah. And that was something, that was another cool thing about, about the movie that a lot of it, that it wasn't just a movie about the impact that, her death had after that it that that is shown, but but the impact in the small ways in the hallway and the way that she noticed people, I think that those were kind of ended up being the biggest ways she made an impact in people's life. You yeah. know, even though they were so small, it was just I don't know. It's just such a message of being faithful and mm -hmm. where God has you. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> I told my kids and many youth go, I, I say one of the things that I say to myself and to other people all the time is God's not waiting for you to be talented. He's waiting for you to be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's a good word. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes we wait until we think we're going to, we're ready or we're going to have this huge yeah. impact. And, and yeah. it's, and it's not when we can do everything. It's, are we going to do the next right thing? And, yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Definitely. Good. Now, so that was my wife's question. My 12 year old son, <laughs> his question was a little different, who is my son that, just to give you some idea, any time that we can't find him, we just look up at the tallest thing because he's climbing on it. So oh, this morning, uh, <laughs> this morning, he wanted to know, now that scene, and I won't give anything away about the movie, but the scene when you are up on the building at the high building and you're walking along the ledge of this building, he said, Ask her how high she really was. <laughs> so there you go. For Caleb, you know, that's his question. I, I'm just going to answer. You said his name is Caleb, right? Yeah. I'm just going to say Caleb, movie magic. <laughs> There's something called movie magic. <laughs> and you can't, 
you can't give it away, you know? It's like giving away, if you can do like a card trick, you can't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell them to believe in the magic. Right. <laughs> the All right. All right. Well, there you go, Caleb. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So. <laughs> <All right. laughs> So you know we, we, we you know we've looked we've looked at issues of imperfection and and faith and tragedy and all that. Now the actual making of a movie, there there are unique things that happen. It always seems like there's somebody on the on the set, um, whether it's a director or whether it's one of the other actors who's kind of the prankster or whatever. What's any person that you think of as the funny person or something strange or weird that happened on set that you just look back and go, okay, that was hysterical. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We had, our cast had the, I mean, most incredible time together. We kind of became like a family and, um, I don't know. We, we were constantly, I don't know. There's constantly so many things going on. And, um, for most of my stuff, I had to be just extremely focused and extremely like, you know, I could not be the any sort of the prankster on set. <laughs> but I remember the director, Brian Baugh, he would, like, during scenes, like, I would have, you know, towards the end of the, the filming of that day or something, he would just tell someone during a scene just to mess with me and just totally, like, throw me off and say different lines and just see what I would do, you know? <laughs> and so, like, we're in this really serious moment, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, some actor comes up and starts doing stuff while they're filming in the middle of the scene, and I'm like, and he just wants to see how I'm going to respond, you know? So he would do stuff like that. Um, I always thought that was funny, but I, was, I never knew what to expect. Yeah. Um, but then I would say, I, don't, I really don't know. You'd probably have to ask the other cast members because they kind of all got the, I don't know, they got to laugh a lot more than this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, got to spend a lot more time together. Mm -hmm. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, and then I remember, this was really cool. <laughs> Um, we got one day a week off. It was Sunday. And, you know, every other day we were working 12 plus hours. And so Sunday was like our day. And uh, me and the director, you know, I grew up playing basketball. And so we were like, what can we do today? It's just like fun. And like just to get out, like, you know, um, not think about anything, you know, set wise. And we would go to one of the producer's uh, house and play basketball outside for hours i of course beat him every single time but you know i still hold that over his head today it's kind of right. not true but i still like to say it is well now it's recorded in an <laughs> interview so. yeah exactly yeah hopefully he sees this hey brian <laughs> um, but i don't know that was just something fun that we did and um yeah so, i can't think of anything that's funny right now but we had a blast yeah. oh my gosh we had so much fun on that yeah. set and was there was there anything about the process? Because I know that I know that you've you've been acting for for a while. This is your first. My understanding, this is your first lead role. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so what, were there any? What what was different about that? Either from yeah. a, well, I'll just let you. I'll just let you take that where you want it. Yeah, um, it was definitely different because I've had small parts on things, and but being a lead. Um, I actually got some incredible advice going into uh, the film from a really talented actress that I admire so much. And she just, you know, reminded me before I started filming of the importance of carrying a film. You know, when you're the lead, you kind of are carrying a film. You kind of set the tone and everything. And um, you have to be so focused and you have to be so disciplined, you know, even at night, like if people after a long day on set, everyone wants to go out to dinner and like, you know, everything else like that. Um, if you're the lead, like he, I had to, I went home and like literally read my script two times and um, had to prepare for the next day rather than going out at night, you know? Um, but I wouldn't change that for anything, but I, I learned you have to be extremely disciplined and extremely focused and um, kind of really laser zoned on what your mission is and go to the finish line something the director would say every day was um you know he'd just be like it's just another day on set like let's do the same thing tomorrow because you know there would be these big build-ups to these certain scenes that we were kind of nervous about and he was like it's just another day like just do your thing like let's just do what we know to do and so he kind of would make it not a big deal in my mind and that helped so much of just going into it like we're you know one more day till we finish of just like kind of a it's a marathon it truly is a marathon um and you have to stay so so focused on the finish line throughout the whole thing 
I hope that made sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So as, as we, as we wrapped up, uh, or a wrap up there, there are lots of ways that people can find out about it. I mean, you're on Twitter and Facebook and really, I, you know, the, the site that has been built for this movie is fantastic, which is just, yeah. I'm not ashamed film.com. Right. And, uh, and where people can find out about what theaters it's in and you can look at photos and read quotes and see clips and, and all that. So, so definitely I highly recommend people check out I'm not ashamed film.com. Yeah. Uh, so for you personally, moving forward, kind of what's, what's, what's on the, on the plate for you, whether it be projects coming up or studies or what are you, yeah. what are you, what's, what's, what's coming up for Macy McLean? Um, well, right now it's been just a whirlwind of promoting. I've been traveling a ton, but, um, hopefully soon there are some really cool projects in the work. And um, if I get to be a part of them, I, it would be a dream too. I, well, this film, doing this film was the highest of dreams, you know, mm -hmm. be a part of it. But um, I can't say fully a lot of it. I do know the director that did direct I'm Not Ashamed is working on getting one of his films produced, one of his projects, his scripts that he wrote. Um, and it's fantastic. And um, if we got to do another film together, it would just be really fun. It'd yeah. be a really fun thing to do. And so maybe that'll come up, you never know. <laughs> and um, yeah, some other cool projects that I wish I could tell you about right Gosh. now. Yeah, keep your eye out. Well, I guess we'll just have to do this again. Then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just have to do this again. Yeah. You know, sitting yeah. in my backyard. I have no makeup on and a sweatshirt. Go. <laughs> and my dog's been barking in the back, so... It's all perfect. Well, we're, we're, this whole thing has been making a a, 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 move, a real movie about a real person with real life stuff happening. There you so go. It seems yeah. just fitting, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Sorry I, I should have had my kids just running through my office right you now. You really should have. I mean, you've been <laughs> different times during this, and who knows what else. I think the yeah. bird's chirping. <laughs> well, Macy, thank you so much for taking the time and really, really appreciate it. I just, I believe this movie is going to impact people in, in so many, so many ways. And not just, not just people who are already Christians, but, um, but it's a movie that you could really invite people to because of the, the rawness yeah. and realness to it. So, um, so I, I look That's forward to seeing how God's going to use this. Yeah, it's not just, um, I would say to stress that too, it's not just for, you know, people that are believers or, or you know, it's, it's, everyone can relate to this movie and you will walk away impacted and inspired and really challenged. So no matter who you are, no matter what your background is, I would say, give it a chance. Indeed. Indeed. So I'm not ashamed film.com and it comes out uh, Friday, October 21st, 2016. So thank you so much, Macy. Oh, thank you.